Good morning and welcome to Table Talk with Brenda Perryman right here on TV 33 WHPR, Comcast 90 and 20 in Detroit and Oakland County. We're just going to be all over the place and we are all over the place courtesy of the World Wide Web at www.tv33whpr.com. And you can call in this morning because we have some interesting talk for you. I want to first introduce my co-host. Let them introduce themselves, starting with Chris. Chris Sumrall, uh, public servant for the citizens of the city of Detroit. Good morning, Tamika Ashford, public relations consultant for the Ashford Agency. And good morning, my name is Robert Thomas. I'm the current vice chairman of the city of Detroit Board of Zoning Appeals. Well, welcome everybody. Well, today, from On This Day in African American Life in Detroit by Ken Coleman, today, December 5th, in uh, 1943, Jim Holly was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yes, the Reverend Jim Holly. Holly was raised in West Virginia and will earn a bachelor's degree from Tennessee State University in 1965. He will move to Detroit in the late 60s and serve as an assistant pastor at Greater New Mount Moriah Baptist Church before being called to lead Little Rock Baptist Church in 1972. He will earn a Ph.D. from Wayne State University in 1978 author several books and other publications as well as venture into various entrepreneurial efforts including Country, Country Preacher Foods Incorporated and Cognos Advertising Agency and I'll tell you he's really a wonderful man and I just saw him today you know he was on earlier so everybody let's keep him in our thoughts today and wish him nothing but the best. And we're going to go on from here and show a trailer for the movie Top Five. And, you know, this movie was uh, written and directed by Chris Rock. And it's about a comedian who, he played this kind of monster-like, uh, not monster, this, I, I guess you call him a mascot-like person. And he wants to be a serious actor now, taken as a serious actor, also, he, the com what complicates all of that is he's engaged to a um, reality star person played by Gabrielle Union, and she wants everything to be public. So they're at two ends of the spectrum. And then there comes a reporter who wants him to be real. So let's look at that real quick. Okay, there you go. I mean... Cedric the Entertainer is very funny in this movie. He sits up and says about those hangers. He says, yeah, I need some of those hangers. And then he said, oh, they got them. It's, you know how they hang. You can't get the whole hanger off the hotel room and everything. It's just uh, going to be funny. Now, we're offering passes for this. And if you call in, you can get a pass. Someone will call you back. You could call into our station. 313-868-0342, uh, 868-0351, And we have to get their phone number. We're going to have to get their phone number, Miss Michelle, our uh, producer. We have to get their phone number so that, and they could give you that, so we could give it to the person uh, who will send them the link. I'm sorry, Brenda, can you say that number one more time? <laughs> They're right up there on the uh, screen. <laughs> Everyone wants this is this is a special screening, right? Yes, and so you'll get to probably see it before everyone else too, and that's a good thing. So Michelle, we need their um, phone numbers so we could give it to um, Cornelius. All right, so that's name and phone numbers. That's all we need. All right, let's get to work. Now you know the big talk is on Eric Gardner. Gar it's Garner, really. I don't know why I put Gardner. Um, what was your response to that, the fact that the grand jury was not going to indict him, the, indict the police officer who seemed to do the chokehold? You know what? Historically, the only thing that has changed is the calendar. That's it, the date on the calendar. I mean, historically, 
you know, when you look at when black folks were colored, when black folks were Negroes, nothing has changed from the Emmett Till situation to situations that we're not even aware of. The only difference nowadays is that you have social media. And so now you see this particular situation being outplayed over and over again. But nothing is new. I mean, racism is still the elephant in the room. Um, I feel like much more attention needs to be addressed here. Um, I'm very concerned on, on my own personal social media. I said I feel like it's ironic back in the day, again, when black folks were colored and Negro, you had celebrities who were engaged and who were vocal. And I think the politicians back then were much more engaged. But right now, it feels like everyone is very silent. I'm very concerned. I'm not necessarily expecting for a Calvary to come in, but I do expect something to be done. And it feels like every week we're having the same conversation. And I'll say it again, if it happened in any other community, a stop would be put to this situation. You've got to call a spade a spade. There is no regard for African-American life, in particular with African-American men. And the fact that a police officer can just take a life without no regard, go through zero protocol, it's, it's very alarming. I'm very concerned. Absolutely. Well, you put something on your Facebook this morning, and um, you put something on there that dealt with, you showed Radio Raheem getting chokehold, and then you're looking at Eric Gardner, yeah. too. Art imitating life, yeah. And, and Spike Lee had a, he made that same reference, mm -hmm. too, uh, right after the failed indictment. Um, and quite frankly, Brenda, out of 165,000 indictments that was um, um, held in, was it 2010, 2009? Um, there, were, there was only 11 failed indictments. Um, literally, you can indict anybody, anything, um, and this just this didn't happen. And not just that, it was evidence there that, hey, this guy said 11 times, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, et cetera. Um, and he could not breathe. They had his, you know, he choking him out. They, 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 you know, they was on his back. It was evident that um, something should have happened. Um, well, I don't, I don't think anybody else in the community is doing this Today, I actually have a New York City policeman calling into the show to tell me her, his perspective on it and so forth. Chris? You know, um, I'm sure that, that call would be an interesting call because I have several friends in law enforcement, and they have a different perspective on a lot of these cases, including Ferguson and this Garner um, death, a homicide. Uh, but I think the, the, the general perspective is that of the community most of us don't have the luxury of having a badge and a gun at our disposal and so we don't have the uh, the uh, position or the comfort um, to look at things that way I, I saw a short clip by um, Sean Combs um, many people know him Diddy, Puff Diddy or whatever why'd you do this? No, I was just <laughs> <That's kind laughs> of rap, but but get into your way. rap mode but uh, he, he put a 15 second clip that basically said that you know when he's um, when, when the police are near, it terrifies him. It makes his children afraid. Um, and so this shows that this is deeper than economic. This is deeper than just a tr tradition. This, this is something that um, is in the fabric of this country. And I feel it is acceptable, or somebody has said it's uh, acceptable, because that cop, Darren Wilson, did this. He called Mike Brown a beast. He did all of this, and this was taken into account, it seems. I, you know, so I think the perception of the black man is so negative in this country right now. And uh, some people are very happy about that, unfortunately. And what you're saying is, is correct, Chris. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I think that for many years, uh, the black man has been targeted and is still targeted um, today in, in the media. If you look at the top stories surrounding um, today's current events, they're all surrounding a black male. And, uh, you know, it would be irresponsible for me to say that, uh, you know, we all don't share a, a level of responsibility with the decline in, in, in our communities. But it's not just black. It's white. It's yellow. It's, it's every community. But to highlight the black male, it puts us in a light that is um, 
that is deemed less than or untrustworthy uh, or lack of character, lack of um, all the tangibles that would make an individual trustworthy. And, uh, and you see it in evidence of how people respond to black men, especially in their communities. And I think it galvanized really a lot of uh, uh, black people and white people this particular thing because we saw it on video. We saw it on video, so that was something that was very, very important. I'm going to add to um, that, too, because on, on that topic, it was a lot of, uh, you know, Caucasians uh, on social media saying, hey, you know, I would have got away with this. Right, um, right, and right. And they understand their white privilege uh, um, at times. Well, well, we have the police officer from the NYPD on the phone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, yourself. Yeah, Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we wanted to kind of get your view on what happened and the indictment uh, of the police officer, or the lack of an indictment. Okay. Well, everybody, everybody's seen the video, so everybody knows what took place. Go on. I can't hear you. Hello? I said everybody, everybody's seen the video. They know what took place. Right. Okay, so uh, they knew that a few white police officers, they was trying to take down an unarmed black man, and um, they couldn't get him down, so they jumped on him because of his size, and he was yelling out, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and they proceeded to take him down to the ground, which we told in the academy that choco was illegal. And, you know, with that being said, you know, I guess with all the adrenaline flowing and all the emotions running high, the young, the, 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 the male died he, he went into cardiac arrest. So do, do you think that because he did not initially succumb to, you know, the, they, they said it was disorderly orderly conduct or something, are you saying that he, um, emotions got high with everybody and so that just happened? Yeah, well, yeah, well nobody wants to be arrested, especially if they feel they're not doing anything wrong. So, you know, if he had just went you know, did what they told him to do, I think he would have been alive today. But because he was kept saying, I, I didn't do anything, what did I do? And you know, he was not willing to go because he didn't feel he was doing anything wrong. And he was wailing his arms, so it makes it look like he's resisting arrest or disobeying a lawful law or, or being disorderly, and probably he wasn't. He just didn't want to get arrested because nobody wanted him to get arrested. And with that being said, officers, to, you know, they started to take him down, and like I said, emotions ran high, and one thing led to another. But the brother didn't uh, do anything uh, wrong. You know what? First, thank first, I want to thank you for your service uh, in your community. Uh, you know, here at Table Talk, we have a lot of respect for, uh, you know, the good officers out there like yourself. But I just want to ask one question to start. Do you think that uh, Mr. Garner was murdered? Yes or no? I think he was murdered. Well, you know, what happens is there's two ways to look at it. You know, there's two ways to look at it. People could look at it and say that he was murdered, and then people could look at it and say it was just manslaughter, because I don't think, to be honest with you, I don't think the author, White, I don't think he was trying to kill the guy purposely. I really don't. That was his intent to say, you know, I'm going out to Are you I'm saying kill because guy. the guy was bigger, he, um, they used more force? Yeah, he was bigger. He was like maybe 6'4", six, 6'5", six, like 300 pounds. And this officer was maybe 5'10", 5'11". But, so but he wasn't the no only way. officer no. out and, there. And that, that troubles me because the chokehold is still illegal. And if he right, the chokehold, like I said, you know, his thing was trying to just get on his back to subdue him and get him down to the ground. And like I said, the guy's so big, once they couldn't get two or three, because let me tell you something, as being a cop, it's hard to arrest somebody when they don't want to get arrested. I don't care how big you are, how, how small, how tall you are. If you don't want to get arrested, it's going to take more than one officer to get you down. I, I, okay, I can I, I hear you on that. I feel you on that one. But he was backing away. Um, he wasn't he wasn't hostile or anything like that. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. But like I said, when, if he didn't follow the order that the police officers gave him, I think he, if he had followed that from the very beginning, even if it turned out, it might have turned out even better. I feel like say if they told him, say, listen, come with me. You know, you're under arrest for whatever, so and so. Put your hands behind your back. I think if he had did that, and he would have been alive today. And just you know what? Let me let me go to jail. Or let me let them do what they got to do, and we, I'll just deal with it, you know, when I get to the precinct or, you know, the consequences. I'll just deal with the consequences later on. Get my lawyer and deal with it after that. I think he would have been, you know, I think he would have been alive today. What, what is the feeling um, 
on the department in New York right now? What is the consensus well, amongst well, the Well, you know what? There's a lot of it's a lot of feelings right now up in because number one, we just had it I don't know if you guys heard it, we just had an Asian officer accidentally kill another unarmed black man in a in the hallway of a project building. And the officer is, was black, right? Yeah, no, the officer was Asian. Oh, he was Asian. Asian. But see, that goes back to the training that these new guys come in with because, number one, when I came out 20 years ago, I had a field training officer. I had a, a veteran officer take me under his wing for the, maybe the first six months, teach me the ropes, teach me some good things, and I learned, you know, and I learned that way. You know, now you've got rookies working with each other. And I mean, they just do what they just do enough to get out the academy textbook. Your real training comes on the street. So now, when this officer is coming up in a apartment, a large project building, New York City housing building, which they call the Lewis Pink Houses, it's about eight twenty stories. And you know, in all these pro in all these projects, the the hallways are dark. All the lights aren't working. The elevators sometimes aren't working. And they were going upstairs to do what they call a vertical, which means they have to go upstairs check the roof, make sure the roof is secure, make sure that nothing's going on upstairs on the roof. And I'm being walking up the stairs, they come across a dark hallway, and they're coming out with their guns out, And which means that, you know, first of all, their guns shouldn't have been out. My, that's number one. You know, their guns shouldn't have been out. If anything, put your hand on your holster. And then if you have to draw your weapon, then you go you go from there. But they, this officer had his gun out with his hand on the trigger, and he didn't. And he didn't intentionally shoot this brother coming down the stairs. He got startled because the brother was running down the stairs, and he just heard a noise, and he got startled. And he, he, you know, when you get startled, and your hand is on your, your fingers on the trigger, you jump back. Your finger jumps back on the trigger and pulls it back. And actually, he hit the wall, and the wall, the bullet ricocheted off the wall and hit the man in the chest. So that's how he died. So it wasn't like he was intentionally to kill him. We did. That just goes back to well, training. We, did, we didn't hear about that. Yeah, so you're not going to hear about that. All you're hearing about is the white and black, the race, the race colors are with the unarmed black Trayvon Martin and the Michael Ferguson. That's all you're going to hear about. Now, re really, we, we're concerned over this police state, though. Uh, we're, we're, you know, you just made a statement saying that he should have complied. When I can say that I always don't comply. I want to know exactly why I need why I'm under arrest. I want to, I need this right. information. Well, you know what? My hands that my too. You, you, you asked that question. Listen, why am I being arrested? Sir, listen, do me a favor. Just put your hands behind your back. I'll explain everything to you later when we get to the precinct. Yeah. You know, I have a 16-year-old son, and I tell him every day, if a police officer stops you for any question, keep your hands where you can see them. Keep your hands out of your pockets and follow his direct orders. And then do what he asks you to do. And then when he gets, if he has to, if he has to put his handcuffs on you for whatever reason, don't get scared. You know, when you get to the precinct, you call me, and then we'll deal with it from there. Don't make no sudden moves. Don't put your hand in your pocket. If you got your, if he asked him for your ID, you let him know your ID is in my, and this is sir, my ID is in my back left pocket. Either you could go get it, or I'll let you, or you tell me when I can reach for it. But do those you, things, they, do you think that that's things a, that we got to teach these young guys? Do you think that that's a conversation that most white fathers are having with their son? And if not, no, do you see no, that's I, a, a no, problem? I don't think so at all. Excuse me. Pardon? I don't think so at all. So. Where do you where do you see the the problem? Because obviously, just by that experience that you gave personally, there's a there's a fear uh, and a justified fear you being in law enforcement that you're instructing your son um, counter um, the way your w white counterparts would instruct their children. So, well, what happened is well, the way it goes down because the reason I instruct him because my son is 16 year old, he's a black teenager, and we live in a middle class area. But you know, sometimes he goes to a predominantly all black area too. Now me, I've worked in white areas as well. I mean, I worked in a lot of, yeah, I worked in a lot of predominantly black areas, but now I worked in predominantly white areas also. And I don't think that conversation that white fathers, because there's really nothing going on in the white areas where you got black police officers that's in that area that we are stopping uh, white kids for this or that. You know, we stop them if they're doing something wrong, but we're not going to just stop them just to be stopping them. And that's that's going back to stop and frisk. Yeah, that's going back to that's going back to that's going back to where uh, number one, where we're being brought up and raised. Now, see, when you come from a predominantly white area, and then all of a sudden you go to an area that's majority of color, 
and you got a, that's a high crime area, your patience level is very thin. See, me, I can deal with this because I grew up in a predominantly black area as growing up as a kid, so my patient level is a little high. So I can, you know, justify, I can know where the conversation is going or where, where this situation is going to go before it even goes there. Whereas you're a white officer coming from a predominantly white area, you don't have no clue about how black people think or, or what's going to be the next move of this guy here. All they know about is what they see on TV. Right, absolutely. Yeah, but it's a double standard that. Uh, and let me and, 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 let me, and let me and let me be and let me be quite frankly, if this if this was a black officer that did that, it wouldn't be a really. It, I mean, they would talk about it, but it wouldn't be such of a big deal as far as race is concerned. I bet Everybody's making a big deal uh, about know, the race I, issue I because think, it's a white officer and it's a black guy. I think if it was a black officer, I don't think that Eric Gardner would be killed earlier on. Exactly, mentioned. exactly my point. If it was a black officer, like I said, our patience, our patience, and our tolerance. And our tolerance level is a lot higher than white officers because we grew up in these certain areas and we know how to deal with our own people. And to be honest with you, if I'm out there working in the street and I don't care whether he's white, black, Hispanic, Jew, or Gentile, if I ask you to do something, that's what I expect you to do. Now, my job is to come home to my wife and my kid every night. Now, whatever, by all, every, any means necessary, that's what I'm going to do. So, unfortunately, if I have to take you down, that's what I'm going to do. Well, earlier on, you mentioned that emotions were running high. Would you say that it's safe to conclude that when the officers approached the scene, they already had a certain type of posture about this gentleman, Eric Gardner? I mean, they well, already had a I wouldn't motive say, out. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say the officers itself. Okay. I would say the officer. I wouldn't say officers because if you, if you look at the whole situation, see, a lot of people, you might not notice, but this particular white officer, he's already had two lawsuits pending on excessive force. He's already had one lawsuit on excessive force where he stopped um, a black guy, in, I guess, in that area and um, for mistaken identity or whatever the case may be. Anyway, the family sued the department, and they got $15,000 behind the lawsuit. And he, now currently he has another lawsuit that's pending now. So, so I wouldn't say it was the officers. I would say just with this one particular officer. But with all due respect, I do have to stick with, with it being plural because – it was more than just one that was engaged in that particular situation. That the other right, it was more than one. It was more than one engaged in the situation. Yeah. But when you're working together, you're doing That's everything the, to get this person down. Together. I'm not going to let one person try to get him down. I'm going to help out. But I don't care if he's white or black. They I'm going to have something. my fellow officer. But you they know, we'll deal with it from there. You know, it feels as if that in the brotherhood of uh, policing or law enforcement, no matter what your partner is doing, you have an obligation to side with him, whether it's right or wrong. And right, you that, have I mean, that, right. You have a, a, an obligation to respect. And if he's doing something wrong, but now if he's affecting an arrest, you take him down for an arrest, and then you deal with all that, all the other crap later on when you get to the precinct well, and, uh, and after the person you is killed, that's when you deal. Well, this okay. is my question: is quickly because we got to move was ahead. It, it was unlawful for him to put that gentleman in a chokehold, correct? Oh yeah, no question. Okay, no so question. I'm going to quickly say all, this: they, teach, they the, teach you in the academy that chokeholds are illegal. That's I, number one. With that being with that being said. What is of more importance? If you saw someone getting choked or you saw someone selling loose cigarettes, what would you respond to first? What would be most important for you to um, respond to? If you well, saw just me, anyone. I care about the loose cigarettes. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is you had an individual who was doing something illegal selling individual cigarettes, and then you had another individual who was choking a, a human. And what happened is those other officers chose to respond and help the individual who was breaking the law, choking the other, the, the and brotherhood. And like Trump, I said, like I said, the, when they was, when they was like, when I'm saying the emotions running high, you probably got the guy in the chokehold and don't even really know you got to really trying to cut off his head, getting him in the chokehold. You're just trying to take him down to the ground. The guy, uh, once he said, uh, you, you I, I can't that, breathe. That, yeah. I, once he said, I can't breathe. How many times did he say that? 11. Like 11 yeah. times. And the guy jumped out. He said out 11 nowhere. times. And like yeah. I said, in the midst of all of that, he said 11 times. Somebody should have heard it. And I don't know somebody why they didn't hear it, but them. somebody should have heard it. And I just heard like pulled the guy off of me and said, listen, he's down. That's we it. heard him here in well, Detroit. Yeah. But, um, War, we, got, we have to go and move Thank on you. to our Thank other. You. I re we really appreciate yeah, you appreciate coming it. on. Thank and, you. And um, the, we'll all agree to disagree with yeah. some of the issues. I'm, but I'm quite disturbed. You're, com yeah. you're coming from you're coming from the Brotherhood, the Blue, the what, brotherhood. The blue Line. That great thin blue line no. or great blue I'm line? Coming, I'm, com I'm coming from protecting myself. 
Oh, okay. In my family, I, I don't deal with that blue line. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm in an organization now called BCAP, called Black Cops Against Police Brutality, and that's what we that's what we do. Yeah. Keep up the good work. We're against police brutality. Oh, you're I appreciate so, you, brother. You're so wonderful. I will talk to you later, and thank you for right, calling then. in. Now Thanks get some rest. All right. All right, Auntie. Yeah, okay. Oh, Auntie. I'm exposed. <laughs> all right, but the thing is, he worked all night and so forth. But we want to get through these so that we could get to, and we'll talk a minute or two more about this, but we want to get through the, these because we want to go to your top fives. Uh, we're talking about Chris Rock and the top five things. So we want to go to your top fives. And I hope we don't argue. Okay. Um, but all right. Okay. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> and, uh, okay. As far we know that the feds are looking into this. There's a great, and the police department is looking into this. This, and what gets me is that police chief. At first, he said we're not going to take that chokehold stuff, and now today he's defending it. it. You know that bothered me. There's a um, contrary to what the gentleman on the line said. There's a a brotherhood that is clearly visible to all those outside of it um, that exists that is unlawful, and uh, it's it's okay for uh, officers in in uniform and out of uniform a lot of times to break the law, right? And right. whether you see them speeding by you with no objective in mind or doing whatever, there there's this uh, uh, sheriff in town mm -hmm. mentality that the law is for you, but I am the law. I am the law. Um, uh, by the way, I want to remind you if you want passes to top five Chris Rock's film, please call in. You'll get to see it earlier, 313-868-0342, 868-0351, or 868-4336. That's area code 313. Um, that, excuse me, back to our conversation. That is, uh, so what you said, because it has to be scary. I got pulled over, well, I've been pulled over a couple of times. Once I got the ticket, the second time, I pleaded, mm -hmm. and I didn't get it, but I'm a woman. And, and you know, historically, and Rob, you can attest to this, there is, um, for me, a, a nervousness. And I was taught at a young age, first start driving, you get pulled over, put your hands outside the window and start tapping them on the, on the door, <laughs> all type of stuff that is unnecessary but is traditional in our community. And it's it's almost as if, I hate to you know go back to there, but if if massa asks you to do something, you do it whether it's whether it's right or wrong, lawful or unlawful, and you're seeing now where it's being exposed. This has been going on, even probably more predominantly than we than we can even imagine. But it's now being videoed. It's now being reported, and I think that you know it is an issue in this country in particular when you're talking about white on black. Um, violence because of the history of this country and how sensitive, um, you know, we as a, uh, a country are to, you know, our history. You know, we, we are, uh, black folks have been, um, you know, uh, really uh, done bad in this country historically, and so we're supposedly on this level playing field, but it's obvious and it's, it's quite clear that that doesn't exist when it comes to feeling protected by the law enforcement. I, I just get tired of the double standard. I mean, if you want to do it in an urban neighborhood, you need to do the same thing in these uh, uh, predominantly white neighborhoods in the suburbs. Um, it, 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 sh it shouldn't happen. I don't care what race you are. I think everyone would have been appalled, even if it was a black man choking out um, Eric oh, yeah. Gardner instead of a white man. It's, it's this, this police state we need to rid ourselves of. And I'm happy Eric Holder actually stepped up in, uh, in investigating um, um, Eric Gardner's death and um, uh, Michael Brown's. Um, I'm happy that you know, you know, he's he's the president's appointee, and he's on his way out. He's he's going after these people. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it was uh, that that chokehold was illegal, and it wasn't supposed to happen. And he should have been indicted. Okay, we have Miss Marcia on the line. Good morning. Oh, oh, good morning. Oh, I'm so outraged. Uh, you all look so beautiful, Roku. Uh, the whole Thank picture you. just beautiful. Uh, you know, I, you. I'm totally outraged because uh, what did you see what happened in Cleveland? Uh, yeah. 67 officers uh, uh, after two people who were on uh, 
we have uh, this uh, mentality and this culture that the police are cowboys, and it has got to stop. We don't care. We, we want police protection, but we don't want to be treated differently. Our taxes pay for police protection, okay? They are not supposed to treat our neighborhoods and our people differently than they see, t treat people in, in West Bloomfield Hills. I work in West Bloomfield Hills. I call the police out uh, for clients or something, uh, having clients in West Bloomfield Hills. They talk to the, they talk to the uh, people in West Bloomfield uh, like, like they make door neighbors. They, uh, uh, and, and I don't want to be treated like that in Detroit. I don't want to be treated like a, a suspect. My mother raised seven children, and I'm way over 65, and we, none of us have never been arrested. My grandsons never been arrested. My children never been arrested. We live in Detroit. Yeah. We are not, we are taxpayers. Those young men that were murdered were Americans. We are Americans first. And they're not supposed to treat us differently. That's right. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, and that cowboy, uneducated, ignorant mentality that the police have. We Absolutely. have got to get far more well-educated. Uh, you, you need at least a social degree so you can have some psychology and sociology so you can you interact in these neighborhoods, uh, any, any neighborhood, uh, dealing with any crime. First Thank of all, if he's a criminal, he's still an American. Right. We are still Americans. If we are criminals, we are Americans first. And we have such, uh, we have rights. Thank and we you. have the right and animal rights to be treated like real human beings. Yeah, Thank you. Right. Thank you, Ms. Nobody's Thank you so much. We agree with you. Thank you so much, and we're going to continue to make this a... Yeah, I mean, the problem is we're okay. just we're Thank guilty. Thank you, Ms. Marcia. <laughs> we're, we're guilty first and uh, until they ask questions uh, later. Yeah. And they, they treat us that they treat us that way. You know, and go ahead. I want to say, too, this has been going on for years, as I stated earlier. The only difference is now we have camera phones, and that image is being played over and over again. For hundreds of years, the playing field has never been leveled. It's not going to be leveled. I mean, thank God we do have an African-American president, but we can see the great deal of disrespect that's being shown to him. America is very racist. We cannot afford to not sound the alarm on this. You know, we can't just move on to business as usual. We need to engage with our elected officials, our Congress, our celebrities, even within our own community, we need to be the cavalry here. Again, we cannot afford to continuously have this conversation week after week. The only thing that changes is the date on the calendar and the victim. And we continue to it go on with this. Be, it cannot. Be, it cannot. It cannot be business as it usual. It cannot be business as usual. And again, to the elected officials, each one of them, I have no problem calling you out. Everyone that gets, on the, gets out there on a platform says, I will fight for you. Well, I want to know, what are you doing? If I miss something, then please let me know. Right. If I miss something, but again, if you're going to fight for us, I need to hear this alarm sounding. It's not sounding loud enough, and I'm very frustrated. I wanted to touch on a point that Miss Marcia, I think she made. She and, and while I wholeheartedly agree with the majority of what you said, there was one point that stuck out in, in my uh my, the rest of the panel may or may not agree with me. She mentioned that as far as there needed to be an uh, a level of training equivalent to at least associates. I think that that's part of the problem. I think that more emphasis has been put on um, schooling and less on actually hands-on in the community. And I think that um, to, to expect an individual to be able to read a book about black folks or how to deal with black folks versus actually being in that community, right. living amongst well, that. Well, that's why we student teach. If we were going to be a teacher, we got to get in that and classroom and, and uh, all of that and pass that too before we get out into the actual world. Hold on, we have a call. Baba? Is, hey, good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm just fine. How do you pronounce your name? My name is... Baba and Kosi. Okay, I said Baba. I was right. Good morning. Okay, Good morning. could we have your um, comment? Okay, I'm watching all this the marching. Uh, that's a great solidarity movement. I'm with that 100%. But my own personal opinion is that it only matters that if the people you're protesting cares 
I mean, that's all fine and good that we're sticking together as a nation. But like, like your brother said, this is nothing new. I'm 59 years old, and like your brother said, we were taught to put our hands outside the window and all of that. So we've been living in a three state. I think what we need to do as individuals is we need to a, a, a total program system change. But once again, once again, if you're negotiating with tanks against rocks, it's not going to work. We have to find some type of common ground. We have because to change the culture, don't you think, yeah, of the police department? I agree. I agree. I agree. But we have to start somewhere, and we have to start teaching our young men that we are an endangered species in this country. And until we deal with that, things haven't changed. We've been marching since I was born. I was born. I, I don't march, even if I could, anymore because, I'm see, sure. I'm going to tell you, Marching back in the day when in the 60s, which we did, at first it was kind of a shock because government or the powers that be never saw anything like that. Well, they right. see it all the time now, so it's become passe and it doesn't impact them. We have to find it, other ways to galvanize. It seems like it's now it's a social media movement, you know, but I don't see us marching up on any changes. We have right. to change the whole mental outlook on black men in this country. And that's all I wanted to say. And thank you, and I enjoy your program. Oh, thank you very much. Well, we're going to talk a couple of minutes more on this because I want to get into that topic about our top fives, okay? So uh, let's kind of tie it up, and we're going to keep watching this as the time goes on. Y you know, I think I'll wrap it up um, by speaking out to um, my fellow black men out there, that, and I'll just tell you know you guys that uh, you know do what you have to do to be safe. Um, it's 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 not right. It's not um, moral, but uh, you know there have been times where my rights have been violated. But I'm here to talk about it today, and so um, unfortunately, um, until this matter is resolved in a way that seems to be um, in the future. Um, be safe, and I'm praying for all of you. Okay, anybody else? I don't know. I, I think at, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, this really just burns me up. It um, does. Um, it I, does. I mean, at, at the seeing that man um, 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 perish the way he did, and then with the kid also in uh, oh, Cleveland. Well, we had a story um, on that, that too. It's just this, it's, it's an all out assault against the uh, African American male, period. And the Feds, it's an assault against the African American Under. male from the policeman yeah. to their own fr fellow men. Yeah. We got, we cannot forget that, uh, you know. And I'm not going to use the term, yeah. but you know that we have to get peace within our community too. Yeah. So we can't it, disguise that. People don't want to talk about that. And I'm going to tell you, I heard a uh, uh, somebody told me this earlier in the week. There is, there is no profit in peace. Absolutely. But, I, I definitely agree I with think, that. But, Brenda, I think we do attempt to tackle issues in our own community. It's not we, working. I mean, but we're, we're doing something. People are all around, uh, the, especially in the Detroit area and other urban areas, they, all, they have all type of fatherhood initiatives, brotherhood right. initiatives. They have uh, mentoring initiatives. They have, they were trying to tackle it. But, you know, when people bring up all this black on black crime, you know, they, they failed to mention, you know, right? that, you know, was a 92 percent uh, African Americans die from other African Americans. Well, so do white folks. White white people die, what, 86 percent uh, when they perish, they die at the hands of other white people. The numbers right. are high. It's just concentration on the African American community for some reason, um, as, it, as if it doesn't happen in other communities. Right. We are trying to tackle issues. What we don't need is this extra uh, weight on our back. Now we have to you know, look, look behind our back for uh, a law But you're, you're looking at the reality. You're, you're telling the young men that you're men mentor the reality of what is happening now. I'm the mother of a son and the grandmother of three males. And I cry. I mourn. I think all black men have a, a, a target on their back, unfortunately. A pers you know, it could be a target. And I worry about this. And I want to do something, you know, and... Hopefully, if we could just keep the, the
these kids with their heads up straight and we can ch do some changes in the police department. That culture of the police department has to be changed. And, and I want to add one more thing. Um, and I told you guys this before. You know, when I went to law school, I made sure I had that uh, law school uh, logo on the back, uh, back of my car. And I do it for reasons like this. I know I'm going to be treated a little bit differently from any other ordinary citizen because I do know the law. So they will handle me differently or they just won't handle me at all because they know I probably can, you know, right. uh, fight talk it. myself out of it or fight it. So they, you know, I, 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 I may have that advantage. But unfortunately for the layman out there that don't, you know, I have a, you know, this, this really just burns me up when I see folks like this being treated wrong. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. We're going to go straight. We had a lot to talk about this morning, but we got kind of uh, waylaid. Um, and you saw the trailer for the movie Top 5. And that means what are your top five maybe basketball players? You know, people always talk about that. I hear that all the time. Who's the top teams? Who's the top this and that? Remember, you could still call in for those tickets, 868-0342, 868-0351, and that's area code 313. So if you want passes to see Chris Rock's film, Top 5, call us in. you got 10 minutes. All right. I have some things on there, and let's kind of go through it quickly. Top 5 basketball players. Who are your top five? Oh, man. Um... I'd say top five for me, uh, it's going to be a little bit more emotion probably than actually <laughs> stats. But I'd say definitely I would still say number one consensus is Michael Jordan, um, followed by uh, Magic Johnson. Um, I would have Isaiah Thomas in there. Um, I would have um, Larry Bird. And for the fifth player, um, I would probably put uh, – Kobe. Oh, okay. Kobe. Yeah, Kobe. he's having a bad year, but he's had some good years. Well, I would just have to say just that that cool team from the 90s, the bad boys, all of them, Bill Lambeer, Isaiah Thomas, Rick Mahorn, all of those she folks. Likes bad boys. Oh, yeah, the bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> Not this new stuff. They, we they got like zero the heart. Yeah, boys. the bad boys. So. I'm, I'm going to go with uh, first because I'm an Omega man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jordan off top. Then Shaq, I like the Admiral. Um, um, Ten, um, I know who it is. David Robinson. David, David Robinson. David Robinson. Uh, I like LeBron, and I will also go with Kobe. Yeah. Oh, you know Magic Johnson was one of the greatest uh, uh, point. I mean, he played the point. I gave him a show. I yeah, I know. Yeah. I know you did. Well, as far as me, Magic, the fives were Michael Jordan. Uh, in fact, my list looked a lot like yours, Chris. Um, Matt, I'll say Michael Jordan, and I put LeBron James on that top, uh, yeah, top five. Wow. This happened, uh, yeah, great, no, you we did. You finish this. Great minds. <laughs> you finish it. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. So anyway, to go on, let's start your top five actors. It could be females, males, um, uh, included in this. Starting five. that in this time. Okay. Let me, let me think. Sydney Portier would be. My Why don't you one. hold your mic? Up. Sydney Portier will be my number one. Um, of course, Harry, Harry Balafonte. Um, I love uh, Angela Bassett. Uh, yes, I, I love her. Um, let me see. Two more actors. Uh, I'm going to pass on that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, I got to agree yeah. with this gentleman here. Throw <laughs> some old school <laughs> in for some Sydney. Sydney Portier, of course. Um, of course, got to throw Denzel in the mix. Mm, yeah. Got to give it a little extra flavor and, and add some uh, Kevin Costner. I like him. Bodyguard. Much. Mm. Oh, yeah, the bodyguard. <laughs> Taking it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know who else I like? I can't think. Uh, is it Lim Tucker? The gentleman Liam from. Uh, the gentleman from. Um, Liam why did Neeson? I get. Oh, why, why did, did I, I get, get married? Who from that? The tall, handsome. Who played the sheriff in one of the? Oh, yeah. I'm not talking. Yeah. Oh, that's a different top five. Yeah. You're talking about the tall, oh, okay. Tall yeah. drink of water. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a different top five. Um, I think that uh, I would definitely have to pay homage to Denzel Washington, um, Tom Hanks, uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Um, you know, uh, let's see. I think that 
Damn, come on, the, Chris. Uh, uh, what's the guy who played in Titanic? Uh, uh, um, oh, Leo God. DiCaprio. Leo, 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 Leo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. <laughs> and, and, and then it would be uh, a tie between um, the entire cast of the Oceans series because I just think all those guys oh. were phenomenal. So. Yes. Anyway, uh, my my top five. Sidney Poitier oh, yes. is excellent, and he is very tall because you know I had the opportunity to open up for him and meet in. him, and I have a picture of him looking at me. Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> anyway, that's a uh, different top five yeah. too. <laughs> okay, so yeah. have my face. I, I like All it right. because they were activists, though. Yeah. I, I yeah. love they, that they part They were, of it. Yeah. they were, oh. and we also had. Uh, they were activists, and more so activists than what we see yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. We and you they were they, they, yeah. activists. Activist. And they Activist. helped to fund the Activist. cause as well, too. They didn't just get in front of the cameras, but they helped to fund it. The Ruby Dees, the Ozzy yeah. Davis, Davis, they yeah. were very much engaged. Okay, let me finish. And they wrote a yeah, check. I'm sorry. <laughs> Denzel <laughs> Washington, Mr. Cutie Pie. Yeah. Say, Mr. Catch My Eye. Yay. What you doing standing there with them <laughs> tiny <laughs> black curls in your hair? Oh, let me go on. And my book, by the way, like I said, is in his house. His wife bought two of my books. Oh, yes, Pauletta did. Mm -hmm. All right, there's an old actor. Uh, I used to really love Humphrey Bogart. I thought he was excellent. Mm -hmm. I thought that uh, I think as far as, I don't want to bring up too many of the old actors because you all wouldn't know them, maybe. Um, but these days, who I like, oh, man, as far as women, I like, what's her name, from um, how, to, how to Get Away with Murder. Oh, Viola man. Davis. Mm -hmm. She's excellent because she can act without opening her mouth. But we got to go on. What about that guy from um, from uh, Britain or something? Uh, oh, Idris! <laughs> I forget I Idris. Forget that guy. I love him. I was waiting for that I mean, one. He, I was like, he's bow legged <laughs> too. Oh, I mean, like, okay. I've examined these keep people. We gotta keep I've examined one more. Avery Brooks. Oh, the old Remember? Avery Brooks, but I, he Remember was kind of crazy. Cool? But he's kind of crazy. I know he people was a good who work with him. Yeah, but he kept the act Spencer on off hire. the set. <laughs> off the set, he was still Spencer. Off the, I have people who worked with him, and he couldn't get away from his character never. So I said, uh, don't forget too Shaft much. too. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Darnell McLaurin. Okay, okay, <laughs> television Shaft? shows, real quick, and we'll finish with television shows. Uh, real quick. Uh, Cosby Show, uh, Greatest American Hero, um, Martin, Mash. Um, no, not Mash, In Living Color, and the last one would be, uh, back in the day, it was uh, uh, BET with Donnie Simpson and the other Sherry, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. A Different World, um, Fat Albert, um, The Cosby Show, America's Next Top Model, and Project Runway. Wow, interesting. Okay, Robert? Okay, um, I'm going to go and echo you guys, too. Uh, the Cosby Show, number one. Number two is A Different World. Um, good Times. Oh, snap. Um, get down on my <laughs> Different Strokes. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Voltron. Okay. And what? Voltron. <laughs> what a, is that? That was a cartoon. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm too old for that. Those cats. Okay, yeah. this is not in any particular order. Howdy Doody, Mickey Mouse Club, um, Bill Cosby a Show, and... Um, Oh, gosh, I got two more that are, I mean, there's The Fugitive. That was the bomb show back in the day. I just wish I could share these things the with you. Uh, the Fugitive yeah. was the bomb. I mean, every week it kept us going. And also, um, All in the Family. All in the Family. Oh, I have two more. Huh. Real Atlanta the Housewives. Scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say what's up? The scene. Remember the dance show, the scene? I actually danced on there one time. So oh, all right. That's the video oh. footage. I think, Rob, you, you had a feature on there on the scene. Is it on there? Remember well, Fame with yeah. Debbie yeah. Allen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I guess they're playing our music. We we might have another person calling in, but oh, I got a rap. I got a rap. They telling me. Oh, this hour just goes it's way too, too fast. fast. Well, everybody, join us next week. Maybe we'll get some of the uh, topics we wanted to get on today on tomorrow, on um, then. But in the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Love your week. 
and stay safe out there and you guys the same. Definitely be careful. We'll see you later.